We have been using gemcitabine uh, plus napaclitax on the frontline treatment because of the uh, benefit we've seen uh, over gemcitabine alone based on the MPAC trial. There is no trial uh, that prospectively random, uh, randomized patients to gem napaclitax versus gemcitabine alone uh, or, or, or napaclitax alone. So we don't have that sort of information. And to my knowledge, such a study is not being done. So the use of gemcitabine and napaclitax in the second line setting is, uh, is simply something we've been doing because we don't have other options to give patients most of the time. Or, or in patients especially who have received fluoroprimidine-based treatment in the front line, such as the Fulfranox regimen. Um, in the absence of prospective controlled data, I can tell you that from my own experience and what is out there uh, based on other people's experiences, uh, we cannot give them full doses of the gemcitabine napac attacks on the majority of the time. So if someone has received frontline treatment, and in this case will be Fulfranox uh, type therapy, and they go for second line treatment, and you'll be going, giving them um, uh, gemcitabine napac ataxel. As a clinician, I cannot uh, uh, see that I can give them the full dose because oftentimes I end up with uh, myelosuppression being one of the problems which I have to give the reduced dose. And in fact, uh, people at Yale looked at, Yale looked at their um, experience and they found that they had to start with lower dose, but not only that, they had to do further dose reductions. The question is, what is the efficacy of gemcitabine napaclitax in the second line? So I think uh, we don't have a good handle on it. We know that some patients will respond to the treatment. We know that the treatment may delay the progression, but I can't tell you, uh, a, 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 I, I can't make a statement about how good um, that, that would be. So one thing we also don't know, uh, the use of uh, napaclitaxel as a single agent in the second line or even in the third line setting. Uh, I have a, an experience with it and I've seen some patients who can uh, benefit and mainly like a, a transient drop in the CA99 levels, but I would say that I have not seen a patient who had a major response or benefit to a single agent uh, napaclitaxel treatment in the second line or third line um, setting. Certainly the use of napaclitaxel in the second or third line setting is also can be limited by, uh, by patients who had uh, developed neuropathy on the front line treatment like with oxaloplatin. That may be a reason why you can't even give it in the second line setting in some patients who are still trying to recover from the uh, neuropathy. But I can tell you that's not really a common problem. NAPLI-1 was a, a randomized uh, study that prospectively looked into the benefit of combining uh, nanoliposomal irontecan, also known as MM398, combined with 5-fluorouracil glucovorin versus 5 fe glucovorin alone. Uh, there was also an arm, uh, a study, a third arm, which included single-agent MM398. Uh, patients who were included were uh, those who failed gemcitabine-based therapy. So that could be um, gemcitabine alone or gemcitabine combined with other agents um, such as napaclitaxel. Or in fact, there were also f a few patients who had other combinations like with uh, fifluorouracil or capecitabine. So it was a study that was based on patients failing frontline treatment. And as you know, failing frontline treatment not only means that the disease was progressing on the frontline treatment, but it could be that patients were not able to tolerate the frontline therapy. Uh, patients had uh, good performance status, um, zero or one, so they were not the typical patients we see maybe in some practices. Uh, a lot of the patients who come to us with uh, failure on the frontline therapy might not be in a uh, in the category of favorable performance status. Um, so there was a, a sort of a, a selection of uh, good patients, if you would, and uh, in those patients there was definitely a benefit of the combination of the MM398 plus 5-FU versus 5-FU alone. And there was a, a two-month improvement in survival, and usually in a patient uh, population and a disease like pancreatic cancer where survival is really short, a two-month benefit is certainly worthwhile. Now, obviously, the question would be, 
Is it uh, a, these are good two months or they are bad two months? And that comes down to did they have a lot of side effects or, or they had the manageable toxicity? And I can tell you up front that the toxicity or the side effects of the treatment were uh, as to be expected for, from, the, from, these, from this combination and that it was certainly manageable. It wasn't like people seeing uh, severe toxicities requiring lots of hospitalizations or, or even death from uh, treatment. It was a manageable uh, toxicity profile as we would have expected it from this combination treatment based on our knowledge of iron TCAN, but also based on our uh, knowledge of the outcome of the initial studies that led to this study.